satsang, Radhakandam. August 25th, 2024. One day, Guru Padadwanda, Bhakti Rinda Swami Tam, Sri Chaitanya Prabhu Mande, Nidinanda Sri Tam, Sri Nanda 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 Mande, Sri Radhika Charnatwam, Uvijan Swami Tam, Vrindavana Manavaram. So, what are the questions at hand? Okay, have a good night. <laughs> Why do people do drama? <laughs> Mahabharata is a book by Vyasadi. It's 100,000 verses of drama. It's the drama of the Pandavas. History of the Pandava race. So 100,000 verses, Jayadras trying to kidnap Draupadi and this thing, that thing, this thing, drama. So drama is part of life. No drama, no life. If you're alive, there'll be drama. It's interesting how all these are related. Drama, karma, and dharma. <laughs> dharma, karma, and drama. <laughs> All related. You try to do dharma, which requires karma, and while you're doing karma, you get involved in drama. <laughs> so it's very hard to distinguish at any given moment whether you're doing drama, karma, <laughs> or dharma. <laughs> you just to play in the material world. So Mahabharata is 100,000 verses of Dharma, Karma, and Drama. Dharma and Karma is being described there, Varashram Dharma, which is all kinds of activities and karma, and it's all put in the context of drama. Jayadra stole Draupadi and this gambling match and this and that. So if you're a devotee of Krishna, like the Pandavas, you can expect to be involved <laughs> karma, drama, and dharma. So I don't have 100,000 verses of drama. I have about 50,000. <laughs> but I'm working on writing more. <laughs> there's money drama, there's women drama, husband and wife drama, kidnapping drama, so many property drama. Control dharma, so many dharmas are there. But like every, and if it's all said and done, we have to remember Krishna and do everything for the pleasure of Krishna. All drama should end in remembrance of Krishna. Then advancing the cause of our attachment to Krishna. All my bar ends up, everyone's getting attached to Krishna, one way or the other. That's the whole purpose of Mahabharata, to point everyone towards Krishna, to get attached to it. So Dharma, Karma, and, and <laughs> Shrava all work together to bring one to Krishna. But in drama, there's happy times of drama, there's sad times, there's doubtful times, people time, there's funny times, it's, it's a play. It's all a play. Shakespeare said, all the world is but a stage. Everyone is an actor on the stage. So everyone's on the stage called life and doing drama of life. Everyone's an actor on that stage. But the whole stage is a platform to launch ourselves to the spiritual world. Many people are on the stage of life and they're rotating life after life in the samsara chakra because they're not doing bhakti bhajan and they're not escaping the cycle of birth and death. Jama mitra jab yadi dukha darshana darshanam Krishna explains in Gita. 
this birth and death cycles full of misery and problems and faults. So we have to do bhakti bhajan with a clear heart, a peaceful mind, and a sincere desire to attain perfection in human life. And this way we can rise above all the dualities that come our way. Jai Jai Shri Radha. That's a little esoteric approach from my beginning. Oh. Okay. Any questions? Radhe Govinda, Radhe. Bhakti. You offer the result to Krishna, then it becomes bhakti. So I don't understand the bhakti. It's called Rupa Siddha Bhakti. It's a Rupa means a scribe. It's connected to bhakti indirectly. It, in and of itself, it's not bhakti. Like a Brahmin, maybe a Vaishnava. And he chants, he chants Diksha mantras, he worships Shalagram. The worst is mercy of Krishna. But he also does Agni Hotra. He has Agni Hotra because he has Jajraman. He wants to reduce their karmas and, and do some yagyas for their material benefit. So he gets some money for those yagyas. They use that money to push into a salagra. So the action, action of Agni Hotra, Agni, Agni Yagya, it's not an limb of bhakti. But he offers the results which he gets paid for doing that puja for his for his client. He offers the results to Krishna by doing buying incense and oil for the deeds or whatever. What's the question? Yesterday he writes that uh, Arjuna is not qualified for doing the Krishna is telling this. I'm, I'm not even understanding because Arjuna is doing what? He, Krishna wants him to do what? Yeah, but I don't see the one. Hey, I try to relate. I see how it goes. It's 926, but... Before a couple of percent, but after. Bhakti is activity which gives pleasure to Krishna. Yes. It's some of the favorable mind. And that will be us who's in the Ganakana and everything. He's doing his karma, his, his shachya karma to fight a war. If you do that, you go to Swarga That's his dharma. So Bhakti is here in Shining Memory Krishna. So I was doing in the blessing. Each chapter or seven, just about so Asia called Asia. He said, I was doing the fight, but think of it. That's the type of 
So the thing you're finished in this case is instead of boxing, you can say, but its main activity is fighting. So fighting a, as an activity is not bhakti, it's karma. What's your question? Let's just try to learn your question first. Yes, good. Like, all activities can be bhakti. Just, you know, I, I was only chanting, hearing. Well, there's Gamma Bhakti, there's Karma Mishra Bhakti. That's what Rupa Goswami says. The pure bhakti isn't these things, which means they exist. They're also described. It's called Shrubh Siddha Bhakti. It means here in saying we're only about Krishna, that's pure bhakti. By doing your karma, it's indirect way to come to pure bhakti. Indirect. So you're doing your Rajasram karma of being a sentry, fighting and shooting arrows, that's not bhakti, but it will bring you to bhakti because you're thinking of Krishna fighting. We you should think of Krishna play cards all Sarah Krishna. Then you're not going to Krishna, you're directly linked with Krishna. Just a matter of realization. The other forms of karma Bhakti, Gamma Shabhakti, you're leading to Krishna, are leading to pure bhakti, but they're not pure bhakti, they're not themselves. Just nice saying it's pleasing to me, so do it. Uh, uh, Renikashpu is also a pleasing Christian. <laughs> you want to fight. So he follows his gatekeeper's three birds. Ra, Renikashpu, and Ram, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know, whatever. He took three birds. Jai B. Jai took three birds. What were they? Ravan Kumakaran. Ravan Kumakaran. And Sishupan and Dandu. Dandu. Sishupan and Dandu. And Ravan Kumakaran. So you're good now? Something. Sure, Something. Sure, sure. <laughs> Krishna is asking Rajnana to fight. And because it's pleasing me. It is really dirty, man. It's dirty, man. Stay on so that no we can many places says that it's your duty, do it. It's dirty. Doing his karma, Varnashram Dharma. Not doing duty, he will get it. Whole Bhagavad Gita is meant for Indians. It's meant for Varnashram Dharma. Varnashram Dharma. Lord Saitanya didn't reject Varnashram Dharma. He just said, he, he said, go farther. He followed Varnashram Dharma strictly himself. He had all night long, he turned around on the right, but he didn't eat his food, because he's running on the right as a shooter, he's a Brahmin. And there's his time to only take food cooked by a Brahmin from a Brahmin's hand. He talked Kari Kata and Rasi Kata all night long, around on the right, which he shot him, but he couldn't take any food from him. And he was very strict, sannyasi, look at Shantari Das. He got sent away for begging rice from a pure rice shabby. Madhavi. She goes to Iraqi and a pure sit of rice shabby. And the Lord Sitaran said, you beg, you bet with a woman, so get out of here. So, yes, because he said, Chandrayas was a renunciate. So, the Lord Sitaran banished him. He went to commit suicide. He was very strict in that. So he himself followed, he observed Chaturmasya. God doesn't need to observe Chaturmasya, but Sanyasi followed Chaturmasya. So he seen Sri Ranga and make it a Bhattas house where he met Gopal Bhatta, Gopal Bhatta for four months, fasting, observing Chaturmasya. He observed Ikasi Bhatta. God does not deserve because he brought it. 
We all make Christian fast on his gospel, our mercy. We feed our mercies. He fasted. Did he take care of our son? And as he did his I don't know, it's not told what he did. He didn't take food. So, virus, so our children, it's the same thing. He's following his Vara. Chaitanya is following the Vara of being a Brahmin. Our children is following the Vara of being a Shatri. Your Vara is to be a teacher. The study of teeth. Hey, question, hey, question. Any live questions? In Bhagavatam it says that we can chant the holy name in whatever way it will have a great effect. Like Sadhya, Helayeva, Sanketa, Helena, all that. And on the other hand, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says that uh, if we are not careful, weeds grow. If we are not careful with Bhakti Bhajan, he says uh, we should be like a gardener, we should remove the weeds so that bhakti will grow so how is like both go because holy name in one side if you are not careful it will help it will grow the weeds what are we chanting yeah the question is the holy name in shastra is described as being all powerful anyway we chant it we will get a result but at the same time the chaitanya shastra region but the lord is on it he said we have to be careful when we're shining, because shining can also water the weeds of material desires. So how, do, what is, how does this work? So what it means is any time we're shining, you get a result. But the real result of shining Hare Krishna is to become detached from the material world and attached to Krishna. The detachment is an aspect of devotion, and it's more experienced in bhava and fully experienced in prema when one feels intense feelings of mamata that Krishna is mine. So the, the, the idea how these work together, that chanting any way we chant it has an effect, that's true. But the effect we slow if we have weeds. It's like a plant is growing, it's surrounded by weeds. The growth of that plant will be retarded, will be reduced by the proximity of weeds. Because the weeds of the plant will be competing for minerals from the soil and from rain and sunshine. From above, the plant grows from rain and sunshine, and from below, it grows from the minerals that pulls out of the soil. So the roots of a, of a neighboring plant weed are competing for the soil, and the leaves of that weed are competing for the sunlight and won't rain, then that plant will be stunted in growth, and its growth will be slow. So Shani Hare Krishna will slowly produce a result of attachment and love for Krishna in the presence of the weeds. So those say, we have to be careful to pick out the weeds. Weeds are kutinati, politics, drama, <laughs> drama, diplomacy, politics, calm, crowd, love, all, all the obvious weeds. So we don't pick, pick out the weeds, we keep chanting, We'll have, we'll have benefit, we'll slowly, slowly get to that spiritual, and slowly come to bow, and slowly come to bring, every lifetime. But we're a good gardener, we get a fruit in this lifetime. That's the idea. They're both true.
weeds are true, and but the, the Bhakti's still coming, but it's slow. You see some people, they join at the same time, the spheres are moving, guys are 10 years, some guys are flying, some guys are still crawling. Sorry. Everyone has to fly their own plane. Some people are just taxi run runway. You gotta take off. In taxi. Taxi run the runway. All life is out of gas. And don't go anywhere take another bird. Actually, what we find in Bhakti. The same problems we had our whole life will haunt us the whole life. And we have to tackle these problems head on. It's painful. Kabir said, Kabir, one, one person quoted Kabir to me. They said, Kabir said, the road to God is very narrow. Very, very narrow. There's only room for one. Which means that the that, that, devotee that that's trying to attain God and God, there's not two. What Kabir meant by this, Kabir said, the road to God is very narrow, there's only room for one. But the road to God means at least you're on the road to God, and the end of the road is you and God. You meet God. But Kabir said, the road to God is very narrow, there's only room for one person. So, so this is a part, it's a very deep part. It means that you have to have one heart, one mind with God. You can't have a separate mind or a separate heart from God. Because God won't accept you. You have to be one with Krishna's mind, one with his heart. If you have a separate agenda or a separate idea or a separate desire, then you're not going to make it. You're not going to attain Krishna. So that's why they say the path of enlightenment is a lonely path. He can't hold hands with anybody but God. He doesn't give his hand very easily. In the Bible it's called rites of passage. You have to pass through the tunnel of darkness to get to the light. And Vedanta says, Thomas C. Mahan Jyotirgama. Had to pass through the darkness to go to the light. The light is the effulgence of Krishna's beautiful transcendental body. It's called Prem Jyoti. Vedanta, welcome. It's kind of like Krishna's on one, one end. He's saying, throughout my love, yeah, Sure. <laughs> I think so. Well, what about, what about all these other things that you come up? Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. a little of that too. <laughs> he said, okay, I'll wait, I'll wait for you. I'll wait for you. I'm on this end, you're on that end. You have to, I'm not coming to you, you have to come to me. So, when you're ready, I'm, re I'm here. So therefore, people come along in our life and push us on the road. We know the road exists. We know the road to God exists. And we're trying to walk the road to God even on our own. But we're not going very fast. And it's rough, rough. <laughs> so then we link up, we somehow, by good fortune, 
by the blessings of Krishna, Bhagavan, we get a spiritual master, a guru, who then pushes us from behind, or rather kicks us. <laughs> <laughs> Pushing is very forceful, kicking is more force. Legs are stronger than arms. Look at Bruce Lee. He conquered everybody with his legs, not his hands. So the guru kicks us along the path and pulls us to the front, he's falling and back, he's kicking. And then we start to move on the path of civilization. Bhakti Marg is called. The path of love divine. Alone we, we see the path, we have one foot on the path, but one foot is off the path. <laughs> that's the foot that's problematic. <laughs> we have to dance all on the same path. <laughs> Jai Jai Shri Radhe Shah. Okay, question. Well, the question is, what is enviousness and how to get rid of it? There's 8,400,000 species of living entities in the universe. The human beings have this distinctive quality that no other living entity has. They have this single quality of envy. So what is envy? Look up his dictionary. See what it is. Envy means you can't, it means a lack of tolerance, a lack of tolerance of another supremacy. You cannot tolerate the supremacy of another human being. Supreme to have more wealth, supreme wealth, more wealth than me, more beauty than me, more knowledge than me, more strength than me, more influence than me, more fame than me, more detachment than me, more devotion than me, more bhakti than me, better house, better money, all these things. The dictionary gets the definition of envy. What is envy? Envy is a feeling. So it's a feeling. Is it, is it a good feeling? No. <laughs> no, thanks. It's a feeling that you have when somebody else has something you want. Here's a sample. It was difficult for her. <laughs> didn't say him. <laughs> It was difficult because there's two problems in this world. One is pride, one is envy. So women have the problem of envy and men have the problem of pride. It's called Dumba. Dumba in Gita chapter 16. It was difficult for her to hide her envy of her friend's success. There you have it, that's Webster. A more translation and definition. Anyway, that's pretty common. I think you must be know what it means. <laughs> 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 so that's the problem. Now what's the solution? How do you move in? 
through envy by trying, instead of seeing with wanting someone else's eyes, see if appreciate what the, what God has given them. Learn to see, learn to appreciate what good things God has given that other person that you're envying. Because while you're envy, you're envy that they have something you want. So don't don't be desirous of having that thing. Be envious because they have it. But direct your attention to God, to Krishna. Say, oh Krishna, it's very nice you gave that person this quality. You're very kind to of them. Please bless me with the quality of that enviousness. And in Vaishnava circles, we become envious of our god brothers and god sisters. We're taught to serve them. Because envy means, envy means hatred and destruction. And love means appreciation and construction. Love, construction means to build something, to create something, to manifest something. And destroy something means to make something invisible, to make something unmanifest. So when you're envious, you want to destroy the person that has what you have. Envy leads to hate, hate leads to murderous intentions which is the antithesis of love. So if you're hateful, you don't want to do anything for, uh, for that person you envy, except destroy them. So the, a way to conquer that in Vaishnav Sangha is to serve the object of your envy. Because serving someone is an expression of love, and it's a way to build relationships. Ser service builds relationships and is constructive, whereas hatred and envy destroys relationships and is destructive. Service is the building blocks of love. By serving one more and more, you build a house of love, that you live in that house. with the gender, it's a, it's not it's, it's not now it's a it's a built-in accessory, like a lighter, the windshield wipers, radio, <laughs> heater, air conditioning. It's all every car has it. You know? <laughs> so you have to train in your body, become a man. Then you have to work with pride. <laughs> Take it away, you go, you're going to get trapped. The man's body is a trap, a woman's body is a trap. That's interesting psychology. I think that you can find two billion women with the same psychology. Why does she get what I deserve? <laughs> Why does she get what I deserve? <laughs> Oh, you can answer that. <laughs> and that answer is not a Bhagavad Gita. That's called Anubhav. You have to have experience of that. What is your question? How to not see like that or how to not feel like that? What is your question? I understand the psychology. It's not favorable. It's not favorable. It is not favorable for what we Yeah, so kick it out. Let it go. You got what you got, so they got what they got. In America we say mind your own business. <laughs> M O B. No. 
M Y O V. My own. My my own. Mind your own business. What they have, you have. They have whatever. Who cares? Who cares about? I got my, I got my problems. I got my good clothes. I got my bad clothes. I got my homework to do, man. I can't be worried. I don't have time. Don't waste your time like that. It's what we call a dead end street. It leads to nowhere. A lot of things you have to let go in life. Wrong thinking you have to let go. Otherwise it destroys you. Wrong thinking destroys you. Look at the Bhagavad Gita. Chapter 2 verse 59. Dayatam Vishyam Pumsam Sangha Sundayati. Yeah, 260, 261 or something like that. 261 or something. Dayatam Vishyam Pumsam. 59, 60, 60. Let go of stuff. Yeah, it's all it's grouped together. Second chapter of Gita, verse 62 to 63. Dayato Vishyan Pumsa Sangha Seshu Vijayate. Sangha Sanjayate Kama Kama Kroda Vijayate. Kroda Bhavati Samoa Samoa Sriti Vibrama Sriti Ramshat Bhuti Nasha Bhuti Nasha Pranasati. When one thinks about sense objects, one gets attachment for them. From attachment, desire arises. From desire, frustration comes. From frustration, when one gets frustrated, one gets delusion, deluded. When one is in delusion, one loses one's memory. When one loses memory, one loses discrimination. Purinasha. In other words, intelligence is lost. And when you lose discrimination, you lose yourself. Pranashita, you destroy your life. So, wrong thoughts can destroy us. So, wrong thoughts we should let go of, like kites. Our mind is like the sky, and kites. Thoughts or desires like kites flying in the sky. You have a kite and a string, cut the string. Now a kite has a string and a kite is flying. Cut the string, let it go. You go, gets lost. What is thinking in your head is the sky and desires like kites. Some are red, some are blue, some are very colorful. And they do fancy flying. <laughs> they rise very high in our mind. Ooh, that is good. Oh. Ew. <laughs> Cut it down. <laughs> Don't let your kites bite you. <laughs> your kite will bite you. She always asks the way psychological questions. You're a psych psychology oriented type person. Yeah, you're all the, you're in the mind too much. Come out of the mind. <laughs> the mind is here, the heart is here. You have to take it the elevator down to your floor. This guy, I like these questions. Manaratena. Shantra Himana Krishna. Pramati Balavan Vidam. Arjuna says in Gita, 
the mind is very restless, chancho, fickle, restless, and very powerful and very determined and difficult to control. Obstinate, difficult to control, like controlling the wind. How do you control the wind? Grab the wind, you can't, you can't hold it. Try and try to hold down a hurricane. Hold down a tuba. It was a hurricane in Tuban and Arisna, the, the cows were flying through the air. Cows weighed 600 bulls were flying through the air. Coconut trees were falling out of the ground. Coconut trees usually bend like this in the wind. There's so much wind that the trees are true. Boats were flying through the air. The wind is very difficult to control the minds compared to the wind in Giza. is how to get free from the mind. So I said die. So then you take birth again and get another mind. There's no, you don't have to get free from the mind, you just have to change it. You keep the mind by purifying it. Chaito Dharma and Marjana. Chit, chit means, chitta means mind, subconscious mind is chitta. All samskaras and vasanas are stored in the subconscious mind in an area called chitta. C-H-I-T-T-A. So it becomes purified, becomes pure by chanting Hare Krishna. Mantra Oshadi. The medicine is mantra. Mantra Oshadi. Chanting Hare Krishna is the medicine. They get a pure mind. Krishna says to Gita, the mind is the best friend or worst enemy. But he doesn't say destroy the mind. He can make the mind a friend. How do you make the mind a friend? By making it agreeable to Krishna's will. The mind should be one with the will of Krishna. Krishna was the will of Krishna. Marmana Bhavad Bhakti Madhyashi Mandamaskri Mama Yuai Shasi Satyate Prati Jane Priyosime. 18 chapter 65 verse Krishna tells me how our mind should be. So we think of him. He comes so he works you and bow down to him. Then you come to him, you become dear to him. Your mind will become Priyaman. Priyaman means a dear mind. Pray mind, a loving mind, a dear mind. The mind is not your enemy unless it's opposed to Krishna. The mind opposed to Krishna is an enemy. A mind surrendered to Krishna, remembering Krishna, meditating on Krishna, serving Krishna, planning ways to serve Krishna is a best friend. The mind is great ally. The mind is a, is a is the source of bondage or liberation. And the whole Gita is talking about the mind. Think of me in a time of death, you come to me. All about thinking, mental, thinking, feeling, willing. This is the mind's activity. Isha, Bhava, Isha, Bhav, and Chaste. Desire feeling and acting. You know the functions of the mind. The mind thinks, it desires, gets feelings, feels happy, feels envious, feels proud, feels graceful, feels affectionate, feels loving, feels hateful. These are all feelings in the mind, not the Atma. 
that I was feeling and desires react. It's called karma, action, or chase stuff. Rock Bucky is called Mono Dharma. Ma mono Dharma. Dharma is the, the, pra the essential practice to unite with God is performed by the mind. So in Rock Mark, we use our mind. We always think of Krishna and Leela. So we don't want to destroy the mind, we want to make it friendly. Hugo Swami says in Sundar, we want to remember Krishna Leela because I was shoot on the current, a pure, pure mind and intelligence. So by doing Nam Kirtan and by sharing Krishna's name and studying Bhagavatam and Gita, our mind becomes pure by a transcendental knowledge and a mantra. And then when our mind is pure, we can think of Leela more easily. And then our mind becomes a very friendly instrument. We have a built-in Netflix right in our head. <laughs> Color, everything. In the mind you can taste, you can smell, you can do everything in the mind. You dream, you're eating pizza, and you're smelling pizza in your dream. And you're tasting it, you wake up hungry. <laughs> <laughs> you call pizza. <laughs> Two o'clock in the morning. Awesome. <laughs> Not here, I don't think about that. They have to live around <laughs> Right, right. The energy, any impression there, any questions from your good self? If someone is meditating on Ron Krishna, can we, in our mind, perform other services for our Rani that are mentioned that are not mentioned in our Shastra? Yes, you can, but basically all the services are described. You can usually all the services will have something to do with our Rani's bathing or dressing or, or eating or or playing, so you can have other services, that's a possibility, but you, with some, maybe some crazy service, then you might have to confer with your guru whether that's possible to have that, because we can imagine any kind of service which may not be real. So then we're just wasting our time meditating like that, because it's not a realistic service that Rao Rani will be, accept or be pleased by. The whole idea of serving our Rani is to give her happiness and pleasure. So, but it's not, not every, you know, just like, you know, maybe some services you won't see in the shots that you can think about, you can come up with. So, it's, yeah, the answer is yes, you can do services on mention. Just like some people ask, in devotional service, Guru Goswami doesn't describe book distribution. 
doesn't destroy preaching as a seva. He talks about hearing chant. He talks about 64 limbs of bhakti, but he doesn't mention preaching. So why is that? So I asked my guru this question. He said, maybe he didn't consider that service because that's not really direct service to Krishna. Or maybe he considered, he didn't mention because he considered that it's part of chanting. It's part of kirtan. It's a type of kirtan by speaking the kirti of Krishna. Speaking the glories of Krishna, you know, preaching or selling books, it's not a mention of Rupa Goswami. So, in the same way, there can be services that are mentioned in the list of Sevas or Arani and Asakaya Grantas are published. Because what we see, there are books by Siddha Saints and Gaudiya Sampradaya, they're called Gutika. The word gutika means medicine or pill. It means like a tablet, a pill, gutika. So they write their they write a bhajan manual combining Gaurila with Krishna Lila, and they often add services that aren't in the regular Shastra themselves. So there seems to be room for that. These books were written in the 18th century, 1860 by Sri Krishna, and even recent books. Ananda Swami wrote a Gutika about 20 years ago, and other devotees have made Gutikas, Gutika, you know, Askaya books by bringing in all kinds of quotations and then adding their own, own ideas here and there. So there's room for that. Invent, you could say inventing a new sale or whatever. But if you're not sure whether it's acceptable or pleasing or all around it, you should describe that service to some advanced devotee who we respect and see if it's, it's good to meditate like that. Otherwise, you're, like we say, you're spinning your wheels but not in gear. You just, and they go, and you've got blood in gear. You know, you're just spinning your wheels and not making progress. So you want to make sure you're meditating on a real reality that exists in the spiritual dimension. And you certainly have, have, have leeway to create a different service than what you see there. But it should be confirmed by the Venice Vaishnava, who is expert in Leo Swan. I be known our year, Leo Vaishnava Padadas, and there's many events to Any other question? Question. Thank you.
Appendix, appendix to my bar. <laughs> Epilogue, appendix. What is I, we say Ramayan. What is iron in drama? So you say Narayan. Narayan means came from water. Oh, came from Nara. Nara means water. Narayan. He's coming from water. The Ramayan, the Ayan means. Lord Rama is manifesting through that. Oh. Ramayan, through that Shastra name, Ramayan. Ram Chandra comes to you, manifests to you. I am comes to you. That's interesting. Narayan Ramayan. Ramayan Narayan. Yeah, I am ghost also. I am ghost is a Bengali name for Abhimanyu. Gauranga's husband Abhimanyu. Bengali for I am, I am ghost. Coming of the coward man. <laughs> Ghost is the coward person. Like we say, go back, go, go in Vajmanda. And then God is a ghost. Ghost means the person who thinks they were cows. They, they describe Rarani's husband as iron ghost. Coming of the Gopan. He had to come watch. <laughs> <laughs> he's in a ghost, he's in a ghost now all the time. Every night he's in a ghost now. <laughs> Why is that? He says he's got an important. <laughs> he has no power, so he stays in a ghost now. That's good. This is a good raises the flying fish for me. There you go, in the Usually that's where I ask me if people start coming back to Brudge, more people start coming to Brudge. It's a slow time. Any question? Krishna Dasi?